What's going on, everybody? We're back. Finding Value Fantasy here with a big board draft. Just set up um, the new desk. Going to be hopping into a just a little big board draft. Got a going to end here. Hopefully, probably in the next two days, this game will might be closing up. And then the drafts here as soon as we, you know, in like a week or two. So um, it's going to be crazy. Best Ball Mania is going to be out soon. We're going to be hopping into that with some some friends and, and enjoying that and the chasing that big prize pool. Like I said, we're going to definitely do a lot of higher stake stuff. But yeah, anyways, I'll hop into the big board. I'll see you guys on the other side. Just a little reminder to subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. Um, on our road to 50 subs, just making one little chunk at a time. Hopefully we get to 100 by the end of the summer, if not before that. Um, but yeah, I do plan to make a lot of good content, or at least a lot of content. And we'll uh, you know, continue to improve the, the quality of content and you know what I'm putting out. And, and also just trying to get more comfortable with what I'm doing and kind of uh, orchestrating <clears throat> what's going on but you know, this is obviously a pre-recorded but i'll be doing more streams here up, upcoming uh next couple of weeks so look forward to that here in the mid to late april and uh yeah i think you guys are gonna see a lot of me um i guess we get sick of me hopefully hopefully not but should be a good time um <clears throat> i think my strategy in the big board is like changing ev like as it goes on <laughs> And there's some like things I'm really targeting right now. Uh, it really depends if I'm able to get it. Like, am I going to force it? But I am. I am looking to get a discount on you know Tank Dell, Rashi Rice, trying to get combos that were like unattainable for most of the tournament. Um, I was able to get a really nice team a little bit ago with uh, Rashi and Dell falling. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with this Rashi Rice situation? But um, if you're able to to nab a discount, even if he you know gets suspended for four games, like six games, whatever. You know, even if he doesn't play, it, it's still worth just trying to get a stab at a, a low owned combo that is like unattainable otherwise. So, so it'll be interesting. I'm I'm excited for that. And yeah, uh, big board wrapping up here in the next week or so. NBA playoffs coming up soon too. Uh, NHL playoffs coming up soon. So there's a lot of fun stuff in the works. I'm gonna be be hopping on to to watch that stuff and. You know, depending on how things go, maybe I'll be able to sweat the uh, finals of NHL or NBA live on stream. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. So definitely some fun contests coming up. And, you know, I'm, I really, really hope I get to do a sweat. I could have done it last year, I suppose. Uh, but um, I really hope I'm able to do a live sweat um, and watch, like, the NBA finals or the NHL finals or something like that. I think it'd be super fun. So, yeah. Um, Fingers crossed for that to to come up and uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get into the season. It's all the drafts are going to come up, NFL drafts coming up, and then we got dynasty drafts right after that, uh, the rookie draft, and then we'll be jumping in right into like fan season long fantasy draft. Like this season is closer than you think it is. Um, starts in what September usually, right? So you know about five months away. Uh, that'll blow by as soon as like the draft hits. So <clears throat> Should be interesting. 109, not my favorite draft spot, but um, I usually could like I'm I'm usually happy to get Puka, but like I don't know, I might be an AJ Brown guy this time. I'm not really sure. I also love taking Gibbs, so we'll see if if we could get the grace of any of these top guys, I'll take them or even a Monra I put in that group. But if not, I might just go Gibbs just to get my running back set up. But we'll see. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of changes I want to do, and um, I definitely plan to, like, jump into BBM quick and try to get some content out right away with, like, my strategy early, and I'll do it, like, a tips and tricks video as well, like a tips video as soon as the, uh, as soon as Best Ball Mania drops, I'll have a video ready for that, too, so <clears throat> that's exciting, too, I um, have to get to work on that one, make sure it's ready to to at least upload right then but i don't know it, it should be should be a fun time man I, I there's a lot of strategy that you can like only intimate implement when like a seat when a 
a tournament opens. So I'm going to be working on that piece of it. So <clears throat> anyways, trying to shift, trying to shift gears a little bit since I'm not recording this one live. Um, but I'm just trying to think of my, um, if I have anything else to chat with you guys about here. Um, it's mainly just, uh, just been a fun off season and I don't know. I think the landscape of the, <clears throat> the season is just getting crazy. Like it's flipped on its head. Some would say, I, I'm not really sure. It's just, it's wild. Like tight ends moved up a bunch, but there's still a little bit of tight end. Like tight ends moved down a lot, I guess more so than anything. And that all changed the landscape already. Okay. Monra goes. So I kind of got what I expected here. Um, Love Puka, dude. But I think I'm going to take AJB here. Give me AJ. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't have a lot of AJ, I feel like, so I'll get him here. But yeah, I'll be doing some short form content too. We're all like record a, a Best Ball Mania and just kind of like report, record every pick and kind of my talking through my strategy each pick. I think that'd be a ton of fun just to kind of get like a, a 20 minute chunk or like a 50 minute chunk of video out there. Um, but you know, the stream content's super fun just because we can get guests, guests on. And um, I think that makes it, like, really fun when you can experience it with friends or other people. Um, so, we shall see. <clears throat> Mom Pants is just a funny name. <clears throat> but, yeah, this offseason has been wild. And there's been a lot of movement uh, up and down. Like, the, the running backs have moved up a ton. There's some, let's move this back down to the bottom. I don't know if this actually works here. Um, yeah, that seems fine. How about that? All right, that's better. <clears throat> so, did it not? It didn't work over there, huh? Okay. Sorry about the troubleshooting here, but. <clears throat> trying to get back in the swing of things, have some new overlays. Um, going to be work, worked on those, worked on some new intros, but going to continue to try to, to up the ante. So, all right, we're, we're on the clock. We are on the clock. We've got HN, Ayuk, JT is pretty solid pick there. No values fell to us. Sparky went at 13. Um, in the big board, I think I'm, I'm like off London for now. I think I'm just going to roll with um, Brandon Ayuk, I think that's fun. Um, if he, like, he's one of those guys where, like, he ends up staying with the Niners, you're happy. If he, if he moves, you're, you're happy too. Like, cause he's probably going to move. Like if he moves, he could move to like the bills or something. And, um, that's pretty, pretty, pretty enticing. So, um, yeah, one of those guys, like you're happy regardless. Like he's going to be on a pro prolific off offense regardless. Um, more than likely, unless he just takes like a deal and goes to the Panthers, that would um that would suck. <laughs> like there's not a lot of landing spots where I see him dropping a lot. I mean, there is some there are some rough landing spots for him though. Um, but I just don't anticipate him if he goes somewhere, I think he'd go to like a, a very good team, in my opinion. But I mean, I'm sure there's a world where he ends up on um on the Giants or something crazy. So um surely happened. But I don't know. It's it's hard for me to like justify taking like these guys that moved up like two rounds. Like Drake London moved up two rounds pretty easily. Very Bright moved up like four or five rounds. Um, so it's just hard for me to justify taking them when I think about like. Well, I mean, it's 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 hard just because you get new information as you go. So <clears throat> I don't think I should be too rigid with that. But there's just a world where you're you're up against like thousands and thousands of teams that had better priced of a player. And then maybe they got him mixed with an even better player than what you have. Um, it's not always the case, but I think it's just in general that makes a ton of sense to kind of like go lighter on a player or fade them if they moved up a ton and you hopefully you got exposure to them at the cheaper price. Um, guy like Josh Jacobs, I'm willing to like not go either way. Um, he wasn't great last year, and obviously he's in a good spot with the Packers, but I don't, you know, same with Henry, I'm not like dying to get him a bunch. So 
we'll see. <laughs> Mixon is a guy I probably should be getting a little more exposure to as I've, I've been pretty low on him most of the season. So if I can get more Mixon, that would be great. Um, here's where I want to get. I want to get the double stack. I just I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I've not been able to get the double stack for Hertz and Devonta, but I would say, I mean, it's probably better for me to grab if DJ Moore's there. I was about to take him for sure. Um, it's better for me to grab Hertz and then just kind of see what happens, right? Um, not that Devonta and Hertz is, is like bad, but I think I take Hertz here and then we see what, what comes to us. It's six picks. Like, there's a world Devonta falls here. Um, like, I think in this situation, like, I would, most of the time I'd rather have, like, I'd like Devonta Smith here, but there's a very decent chance I don't get Devonta at all, or I don't get uh, Hurts back. And I don't want to be sitting here with Devonta and AJ Brown and not have Hurts. So I think it kind of, like, leaves me flexibility to do it this way, where I'm, like, pretty happy if I get Stroud or Dell here. And I'm pretty happy if I get Devonta here. So if I can get either, I'm I'm feeling really good. Um, like even these tight ends are a good, uh, a good back end prize here. So I'm very happy if I get any of these four. So I just need one of these, one of these four picks to not be these players. Um, and even then, I'm willing to take Rashi at 43 too. But uh, just hope that I can get one of these guys. Hey, mom, pants soft, Tank Dell and Devonta. That'd be great. <clears throat> we'll see. Fingers are crossed. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, yeah, I hope I could do an NBA sweat or something because I'm really excited for the NBA playoffs and really like watching the, that one play out. All right, grab ETN. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get something I want here, and that's. <laughs> Uh, always a fantastic feeling. So I think Devonta is like priority number one if he's available. If Dell's there, I'm taking him. And then Kelsey's like back in plan. So Dell's gone. So please leave me Devonta at the very least. Dang it. All right. Well, that's fine. I was hoping to get the double there locked up. But I will... You know, and I'm not even that big of a Kelsey guy, but getting him at the fourth round is pretty sick. And I was, like, fading him last year in the first round. And if you saw the playoffs last year, I mean, first of all, you don't need much from tight end anyways. And second of all, if you saw the playoffs last year, he looked just like his normal self. So hopefully he's got some more juice in the tank where he can, you know, have another great season this season. And, you know, who knows? Um He's obviously going to be the number one target no matter who shows up on the team. So I think it's just, yeah, it's just nice to have him there. And he might get Rice gone for a bit. I guess just, yeah, just a smash pick. In the fourth round, it doesn't make, his price doesn't make sense. Um, he got a big discount for like being potentially retiring. And now that that risk is pretty much gone or is gone. Um, He's very enticing to pick there. <clears> hmm, <throat> mm, okay. McBride goes 45. So same with McBride. That, that's that's the main one for me. Because as I know, people will get him at 90 and 100. I just feel like if he's like an absolute mega smash, I don't know. It, it probably shouldn't It shouldn't matter that much. But there's a world where <clears throat> if McBride is just a, like a mega smash, like those teams are just going to have such a like advantage against me where I don't know if I can compete quite as well. Because they might have a 10th round pick, McBride, and then have all those other picks juiced in between. Whereas I might have like fifth round McBride with, you know, no fifth round pick. Um, 
and that fifth round pick could be you know someone like George Pickens or Christian Kirk, or someone you know Rashi, even if he's fell as far enough, Marquise Brown, Jaden Reed, like these guys would have a lot of upside. Um, so I shouldn't be like full fading this guys. Like now that I'm like kind of walking it back, like I don't think you have to full fade, but I think it makes sense to go like less lower underweight if you already take a stance on them early especially if you took a stance on them really like I think you could full fade easily or if you like already were fading them probably you should continue to fade them and then the last option is you know go heavy on them if you are still that confident in their price which I think McBride could definitely qualify there because who's to say he's not still mispriced right now um I, I think that's certainly possible that he's like still mispriced so <clears throat> Definitely, definitely something to think about in that regard. If, if Rashi falls here, I'm going to keep grabbing him. Um, yeah, it's just hard not to grab this Rashi fall when he was going at the back of the second round. Um, with the 2-3 turn, like, that's basically like trading Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Rashi Rice for Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Ayuk, and Rashi Rice. Like, that's insane. Adding Ayuk onto a Rashi Rice team. Okay, he goes at 55. Fair enough. He grabs Rome. Doesn't really get much out of that. Oh, uh, not a spot I enjoy being in. Um, hmm. I'll be grab I'll grab Mixon. I've been pretty off him, but I think it makes sense to grab him. I've been I've been trying to tell myself to grab him more. He's not the guy I like grabbing, but he's in a just a beautiful spot. And we missed out on our Houston guys, so it does make sense to grab him up there. We could be done at tight end if we want to go with another tight end here. I'm gonna probably get away from that. Um yeah, I'm gonna take a look at these receivers here and hope that I can snag Kirk McLaurin. Brian Thomas. I, I Jacksonville's been weird. I, I think they're gonna grab a receiver. I don't think they're gonna grab one high capital though. Um so we'll see what happens with them. Like I don't think Kirk I think Kirk's price will probably fall a little bit. But that's just me. I, I mean I don't think it'll like significantly fall, but I think it definitely will fall a bit. So Kirk goes. This is kind of an ugly range for me. I'm not big on Ridley. <clears throat> but I would have took him there if he was available. It's an interesting team there. Brian Thomas. I might just grab Addison. Like, we know Addison's good. Mm -hmm. Brian Thomas or Jordan Addison? You mean Brian Thomas, I guess. <clears throat> it's not a guy like, I don't know. It's just not like as much, not as attractive as like pick 100 Xavier Worthy to me. But should get first round draft capital. Was an absolute monster in the combine. Um, I shouldn't be like, I shouldn't be fading a guy like that by any means. So we'll grab him. AJ Brown, Ayuk. This team is Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Ayuk, Brian Thomas, Travis Kelsey, and then Joe Mixon at running back. <clears throat> knowing like the workload that Mixon's going to get just feel pretty nice to have him. And uh, I will try to make an effort to grab more of him while he's at this price. Uh, a lot of sharp people are on him like rising quite a bit. So <clears throat> I should, should try to get ahead of that a bit. This is where I hope I can get another one before Christian Watson, but I'm always like down to reach on, these two like these two guys i think are like just dynamite like these guys are gonna rise 80 80 mitchell worthy are rising after draft in my opinion um, in fact a lot of the, re the the receivers might even fail landing spot i mean there's a few landing spots where look neighbors could drop feels the giants right but <clears throat> there's a lot of like most of them have spots where they're they're gonna move up no matter what 
and you could you could bink like a Casey Casey gets AD AD Mitchell and you have the Travis AD Mitchell right there with a pretty fun combo there. <clears throat> so we're live to grab Purdy if we want to go that route. Um don't hate that. I just don't think Deont Deontay Johnson just has no I have no desire to grab him. Um it kind of feels like Adam Thielen. Like it just feels like Adam Thielen last year where like his nut outcome is like what Adam Thielen was doing at the beginning of the year. And maybe he, you know, does that. But now I'm now I'm playing that guy and I'm getting him at pick 70 instead of pick 150 where Adam Thielen was going last year. Um, just doesn't feel as good, which Adam Thielen was clearly like a, a mispriced player based on what happened. He did fall off at the end of the year as expected, but he had an insane beginning run. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Tony Pollard goes, Deontay Johnson goes. Hold the board for you guys. <clears throat> let's see, a lot of tight ends just went there. So I got Kelsey in the 40s. Laporta went 36. Jerry Bride. This guy got the Mark Andrews Lamar. <clears throat> I'm really curious how many Mark Andrews Lamar Zay there is because it feels pretty hard to get all three. Um, it might be worth even pulling like Lamar here just so you can get like Waddle or you can get Lamar Zay Andrews because I think it's like really difficult to get it otherwise like back here at 70 to get zay to fall or andrews to fall um might be something to think about for sure um i grab godwin here if he's there otherwise i'm gonna take a gander at qb godwin's gone okay um i mean i like i do like Ramondre too aaron jones is pretty spicy as well so we'll see what they leave me i think what i want yeah, I like I like Ramondre here a ton. <laughs> I think I'm gonna hit Ramondre here, and then I'm grabbing AD or Xavier with my next pick, um, whoever's available. I think Ramondre is a great pick here. <clears throat> Another guy in this range, like this, mo like I need probably need to pick up some more Mosters, more Swift. Um, I should be thinking Swift in a similar vein to Mixon, but um, I feel like. There's more competition in Chicago either way. I just Swift has not been like great anyways, but um obviously love the Pittsburgh backs. I think they're both a uh, great price. They've gone up both both of them got up like about 10 picks so far as well. Um <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of curious who I want to pick as my backup for Kelsey here. Hmm. Yeah, and I, and I usually play ADP on them. Like, if I, if I have AD or Xavier, I'm going to grab AD. Even though I do slightly like prefer Xavier, I still will respect ADP and make sure I grab both of them. Because I think both of them are just in good spots. Um, Post-draft, I think they're both going to be an awesome. Awesome. They're either going to both have great landing spots, or they're, one of them is going to have an amazing landing spot that would be worth making. Grab both of them, and then obviously talent could win out no matter whether the landing spot is, but... Odds are they're they're both going to end up on some pretty good teams. If one ends up on the Bills, one ends up on the Chiefs, like I'm I'm dancing. Uh, one ends up on Miami, one ends up on the, the Chiefs of the the Bills, like you're 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 ecstatic there. So Curtis Samuel at 85, that is frothy. I think that Marquise Brown price is extremely lofty as well, frothy, but. At the same time, if you <clears throat> excuse me, if you expect uh, Rashi Rice to get suspended or something, maybe that does make Marquise and Kelsey better picks. Um, maybe that is why Kelsey's been kind of rising faster because he was at fifty, like in the fifties, for a little bit. So I think that's just kind of like expedited the process a bit. Yeah, we're taking eighty here for sure. I'll grab eighty happily at eighty-eight, and then if we could somehow squeak worthy at was it one hundred four? 105. Um, I'd be, be pretty happy, but I don't think that'll be my reality. Mm -hmm. All 
Anyone else we're, we're liking in this range? I like the idea of getting Herbert, like, as second quarterback, just because, like, if he had a normal, like, like, Herbert's just good. Like, he's a good quarterback. And if I can get him at 120 as my second QB with, like, a Hertz build, that's pretty sick. Um, obviously, there's a ton of risk for him, but you're you're picking him at 120, and that's, you know, they're not going to run the ball 100 times every game. They may be run heavy, but that might they may just be efficient. They could just be like Tennessee, like a few years ago, where you know they have one stud receiver, like they get they get Marvin or they get neighbors or something, and they just have one stud that they're throwing it to all the time, and you know it just works out. I think there's you know very that's not necessarily the most likely outcome, but I I just don't see Herbert not performing and and getting your, your 20 point weeks if not more and that feels pretty strong especially when you can think of like late in the season having two guys that have 30 point upside um i think herbert is 30 points as well within his range of outcomes um even if they are run heavy he's just a just a good quarterback so pretty happy to take him if i can get him at a good discount <clears throat> so ferguson's the only quarterback left i don't Definitely don't hate grabbing Goddard and, and, and just closing tight end out, too. Even though I'm not the hugest Goddard guy, I think he, you know, he has a a role in teams like this, so. All right. <clears throat> Party goes. Yeah, Fergie's fun, too. I love taking Ferguson, too. He's a, should be a strong pick as well. All right, we're back. Um, let's see. I think Lockett or Sutton makes a ton of sense here. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Sutton here. Okay, it looks like we have our choice of Goddard, Herber... Lock it. Oh man. Um, hmm. <clears throat> so golf goes. All right. I think Goddard kind of makes sense just to close our close the page on tight end. There's other guys I really like back there, but kind of like the idea of just closing tight end here, having two two strong options there at tight end. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. This is a different team than I usually make. I don't usually run Sutton or anything like that. Hmm. <clears throat> it looks like there. I mean, it looks like people are willing to let QB drop. So if if Berber is like there, I'll take him. But there's a good chance I can get like Daniels or one of these guys, but maybe I will get Herbert to come back to me and I can grab him at 130. Um because I'll take him at that price and and I'll find, you know, I'll grab like Palmer or QJ and and just kind of backfill and hope maybe, you know, one of these other charger other receivers ends up landing there. I think that's a ton of fun. To get like a double stacked Philly and then like with whatever happens with the Chargers type stuff. Um <clears throat> that makes a ton of sense. Sharbs another guy I need to keep an eye on. I think Sharbs is a good pick still. Um yeah, I just feel this is weird. Like having mix on the team makes it feel a lot better just just by default. Um I don't feel great at receiver, but I do like what I have here. So keep on looking here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't think Herbert's gonna be there. I think someone's gonna auto pick him honestly. 
Yeah, it's got auto picked Herbert here. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so let's see here. Zay Jones, Tank, Bigsby. Um, <clears throat> it just seemed likely that they're going to grab someone. The Jags will. But, I mean, who knows what they're doing with their... Who knows what they're doing, man. Okay, well, I have my targets here. I'm probably just going to sit on quarterback, sit on my hands for quarterback now. I mean, I have Jalen Hurts. You know, I don't really need to go out of my way to grab someone yet. So I could, you know, I could take a Levis or a Bryce Young or something. Like, I don't feel good about it. <clears throat> I do, I do like Bryce Young as like my last pick, uh, last quarterback as a guy that <clears throat> does feel likely to take, have some, some decent, decent days this year. Um, that might be a take I have this year. It's fan who like gets drafted there. I think, I think I'll just be like a little bit higher on the Panthers well, in terms of like Bryce Young and, and back sacking him with like a tight end or a receiver. I don't know if I'll be big on Deontay, but I think I'll just be like, just in, in terms of them being a little bit better than last year, I think I'm going to be in on that take this year. All right, so Sharps and Troy is dream right here. Sharps and Troy is my, my dream outcome. Um See if we can make that a reality or not, but just seeing people are letting Troy fall a lot. I mean, I wouldn't mind Judy either. I don't take a lot of them, but I've been, there's been a lot of people that are heavy on him. And they're not going to, I mean, they've made mistakes in the past and, and I wouldn't put it past them continuing to make like really not smart decisions, but I think that. I don't just feel like that's a, just, a, just a team that makes <clears throat> just dumb decisions. And I feel like that could just run, you know, blow up in their face. But at the same time, I don't think it's an awful pick. So, okay. So, so that one's gone too. So, I mean, I'll, I'm stick with this for now. I'll grab Sharps and then see if Chuba's an option after. But I do like this start here. I think Chuba's the guy I would want next if he's available. Quorum seems fine as well. Um, and he had a decent combine, combine I believe. Um, but I don't know. He just doesn't stand out to me as much as like Benson and Brooks do. But I think they're Quorum, right? All those guys are like very live to have a solid, solid rookie season. Yeah, I mean, this is probably where I just grab like a rookie or something or like Drake may um, or I like do something crazy and run with like, like I, I really like the idea of like double tapping these two rookies or grabbing one and just kind of like free rolling what happens. It's like, Oh, whatever happens, happens with those guys. Um, Raiders. I mean, Trey Tucker's definitely a uh, viable, I think. Not a team that I anticipate grabbing a receiver. They might grab like a day two or day three guy. Um, but I do like the idea of going with like double stack, Bonix, Penix, and then run like that. But I'm not taking three with Hertz, but just, just a thought. Just a thought for sure. Um, definitely more of a Jalen Wright guy, but I'm not going to have no quorum. So I'll go quorum here. I love Chuba too, so it's kind of a tough rock and hard place there for me. But I'm gonna grab, grab Corum. And so, so like I said, we're already done with tight end. We're not touching tight end. And I think I do want to go this route. Like I'm gonna grab Hertz and then run like Nix or Pink or <laughs> Nix or Penix, and um, just run one of those guys as my backup. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to load up on running back receiver then. If this is, <clears throat> I think this is my plan. Um, I like Mims, and I feel pretty confident that 
one of these guys is probably going to end up on Denver or the Raiders. So I think I might just play it that way. I think that's kind of fun. Um, not sure how many people are doing that, but I think it's kind of interesting. And I kind of wish I can grab Mayer as my other guy, but I think Trey Tucker's not like not at all an awful pick. So <clears throat> we're going to run this, and then I'm either going to grab Penix or Bonix, which I think I'm going to go Penix instead here. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. So we'll see if I can get Mimsies. If not, either way, I have Sutton. So I think that'll be I think it'll be a fun way to like attack this um, backup thing. And and I'm like not spending a ton of capital at all as my second quarterback, but a guy with you know an unknown amount of upside, I think is kind of interesting. So for now, I'm just gonna load up on running back receiver and and, and kind of bolster that position up. Probably need more more of everything realistically. So We'll just be we'll be scooping up whatever value we can get and and seeing what's available. <clears throat> we got Marshawn Lloyd, Kendra. I think is still a fine pick. Gibson, Douglas, Wandale. I love as well. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. I like this. This will be fun. And I've been grabbing a lot of Bo Nix with Denver, but I'll I'll grab Penix with a Raider piece as well this time. Sharps, Stevenson, Mixon, Corum. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mean, I'm running a two quarterback build, so I might just go like, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but I feel like there's a good chance that Penix or Nix is starting at the end of the season, so I don't mind taking a shot on Bo Nix here. I could go Jolie Hill and just go all the way in on Denver. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that, though. Yeah, I like. I don't like going that crazy on them. If he goes, I mean, and Drake May is usually the guy I'm going for here, but <clears throat> I'm going to make it a, a point to, to kind of do something different here. I'm going to grab Mims and then I will grab my pick of running back between those five. We'll just keep playing it like that. Attack on a running back receiver, running back receiver, running back receiver. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think it's, yeah, it'll be, and I couldn't get me anyway, so I wasn't passing up on a guy I really like. This guy with the unstacked Mahomes, all vet team. All right, respect it. Um, you know, and, and I don't even mind like going vets. I think there's value, like, there's almost always value in the vets. Like, this, like Amari Cooper sometimes is a massive, a massive value, but like, most of the time, like we're gonna find those, you can get those vets that are gonna give you exactly what you expect them to give you. But those rookies, like, could give you nothing. Of course, they could not play, or they can give you a season that's like hundred picks above what you just drafted them at, and that's something that is worth shooting for because that's what wins you the draft. It's not the people that like give you exactly what you you drafted them to do it like that'll help but it's not going to really move the needle um so especially when i'm stacking up a quarterback like i'm stacking josh allen like i, I really feel obligated to like grab a few rookies because you never know if that's especially in the big board just because you don't know who's going to end up there and if you end up with like that clean stack with him it's pretty it's pretty massive where first of all people aren't going to be going for that stack or even targeting it and um, so it'll be much lower owned than it should be if, you know, the, this was drafted after the draft. Um, and you might just end up with like something that only a select few people have just because you were willing to keep taking rookies. And even if they don't land with your quarterback, it's not like it hurts you that much. So that's where I'm at there. I don't know if I'm going to even grab a running back anymore. I might just grab Roman and uh, hammer some running backs later. Because, like, I feel really good about this receiving core or this running back core already. So I might just grab some more re receiver flyers in this range. Because um, there's some running backs later that I feel a little bit better about. And yeah, like, Ramondre and Mixon feel like 
15 touches a week. And then we have like two guys that also might contribute pretty strongly. Like, I don't know. It just feels like a very solid team uh, running back wise already. So I feel like I want to make my receivers. Um, I need some help at receiver. So I grab Roman. Yeah, I think this is this is fun. Fun team. AJ Brown, Ayuk. I feel like I'm doing something kind of a little bit different than usual. Starting doing a zero RB with Mixon and then trying to back stack. Um, so like starting with Mixon kind of feels like a cheat code almost in that sense. But then also I'm, I'm trying to back stack a rookie quarterback that's not drafted every draft. So I'm kind of trying to like kill two birds, one stone in terms of uniqueness. Um, as nerdy as that sounds, that's kind of what I'm going for here. And obviously I could have got Devonta Smith at, what was that? Devonta Smith would have been... What was I looking to get Devonta Smith at? Oh yeah, Devonta Smith at Kelsey price, but it did actually make this team work out better having Kelsey here now. So, no, nah, I like this a lot. I'm a big fan of this team so far. So if I can land the plane with a little bit more rookie power at running back receiver and then uh, my rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, this is fun. I dig this team. I dig it. <clears throat> Round 15 coming in here. Got six more picks left. <clears throat> Let's rock some different music here. There we go. Hmm. Eliza Mitchell was like one of my favorite running backs to grab in this range, but I'm not not too heavy on oh no. Debating what I want to do here. Probably just another rookie receiver dart and then and then go uh that or I can go Bateman if I'm feeling like being spicy. Douglas is a fun pick too. Alright, we'll pray by you there. Anyone been like scooping up a lot of quarterbacks or tight ends? This guy's got three. Bomb Pants has three quarterbacks with Lawrence, Rodgers, Fields. Ooh, Fields at 157. This is scary. Jeez. Woof. Um, we got Stroud, Kyler, Watson, Levis, Caleb, Dak Cousins. Might be another guy there. Purdy, Baker, Arich, and Herbert. Jordan Love. Yeah, everyone's kind of being reasonable about that. So this guy's got three tight end. Another two tight end built here. Got another. Just started taking tight end there. Yeah, I mean, everyone seems to be doing some pretty reasonable builds. Let's check a look at the rosters a bit here. Yeah, I don't know why it changes that off. It's kind of annoying. It just like swaps you off of the person you're trying to look at their team when they just pick someone. Maybe this guy's like lining up a Jag stack, maybe. <laughs> There's Johnu. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think this team needs a Douglas. I think I have enough like banked points with like Sutton IU AJ Brown. Um, if I was like all rookies here, then I might want like a Douglas type, but I don't really see the upside there. But there might not be a better pick. Unless I want to reach down for just one of them. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to grab Keaton. I'm going to grab Keaton. Uh, I think he's just, he's a good pick, good handcuff, and um, showed upside. You know, can bust off some big runs, big plays, and then kind of like bet against Henry in a, in a slight way, even though I do expect Henry to have a good year. I, it's also a fun peak, fun, fun pick as well. Um, yeah, okay, so... Let's see here. Five picks left, one quarterback. And then we can go 2-2 on running back receiver probably. 
or play one three. Probably go two two. Two two on the running backs. I need seven running backs, nine receivers, two quarterbacks. Two seven nine two. Hmm. Okay. That seems good to me. So I'm gonna burn my other receiver here. Or am I gonna wait a little bit longer? Because I'm gonna grab Trey Tucker as my last guy. So I definitely want to take another running, another uh, another rookie shot. I'm gonna grab Trey Tucker. I mean, even though I mean Trey Tucker is basically a rookie, like he is like this definition of like a rookie pick in this. So um, don't need to like go on my way to grab a a rookie if I'm like gonna grab Hyatt or something. Another. Kind of YOLO pick. Hmm. Let's just look at running back first. Bucky Irving, Audric Estime. Hmm. <laughs> this is the type of team I love grabbing Izzy and, and Tank on. Yeah, let me grab Hyatt. Let me grab Hyatt. I... Not even a huge Hyatt guy, but I'm going to grab him. Um, another guy I've been kind of sneakily looking at, guys, is I really like this uh, Elon Robinson. Had a good, a, a good, uh, he's been drafted before. I've been taking him a little bit. So um, I think he's not been drafted a lot. Obviously, the contest is almost open. Big prize pool, kind of worth worth going for those, you know, those, those shots in the dark pet players. I think he kind of fits the mold. Um, had some production, had a good combine, and then he's also a, a special teams guy. So um, that's usually good just in the sense of, like, they're going to play. They're going to have a roster spot. And just having that roster spot alone, like, you know, maybe they make plays at practice. Maybe they get the kick return. They get a couple kick returns in a game or get a punt return in a game. Um, you know, that it just leads to, like, them getting more snaps or, you know, this, this, that, or the other. And I think that's just something that I – I like a lot. I think that's something that is very attractive for me is just have a guy that's going to probably get on the field and get some touches. And if I luck box, that guy ends up, you know, taking a punt return to the house and then he ends up playing more like that's, that's massive for me. So uh, I'm a big fan of that. I love Bateman and I'm always going to be a Bateman apologist, but I will try my best to take him only on Lamar teams um, to kind of make it more, Make it make more sense, I guess. So we have four rookies. Looks like two, three, four. Got to be five with our quarterback. Not bad. Five five rookies isn't isn't bad for me. Um, you know, I basically have two. Like I'd like a like I call these these sophomores are basically rookies in the sense where like they can make big leaps. But um, if Mims sucks this year, there's a chance he's just not playing at the end of the season. If Roman Wilson's not very good, he could just be playing just because draft capital alone. Same with Hyatt, same kind of same boat as Min. So um, that's like a one risk you run, but um, I think it makes makes perfect sense to kind of like take shots on the sophomores at, and kind of like think of them similarly similarly to the rookies. <clears throat> and when you think of like a, a first round rookie, you could think of them like even safer as a pick because you know they like first round rookie's gonna play a lot. Like QJ played all season, he just did not produce like all all season long, which is um, impressive to uh, put it lightly. But yeah, I do like, I do like this guy a lot. I think he, he had a good combine and he has like some good attributes that could keep him on the field or give him like decent draft capital. So I have my eye on him. I've been trying to take him a bit. I'm not like going overboard on him, but I mean, a 20 round drafts, 20 round uh, contest. I think he, it makes sense to take some shares of him. I will be at least, hopefully I, in the one of the only few people that have a lot of him or a good amount so we'll see if that develops i mean he's it's a 20th round pick i don't expect it to just work out all of a sudden but i do think uh the pass there um maybe a little more so than other picks in that range where a lot of these 20th round picks are like very likely to just not even play a snap um like you know tolbert lazard austin might not even like cowing thrash uh, Alec Pierce might not play much. Devontae Parker might not play much. Like a lot of these down here in this range, like might not play. So I'm getting a low owned piece of a rookie um, that maybe you know hopefully lands on some piece of draft capital. So I'm not going to try to justify it to the point where it's like an awesome pick, but I think it it uh, does 
does make some sense. So I'll grab. Hmm. I've been kind of a tank over Izzy guy because I feel a little bit better about tank being the backup for sure. Whereas, I don't know, I just, I hear a lot more about Tank being the backup and like, oh, this guy's the backup, we need to give him touches. More so than you hear things about Izzy, even though Izzy's like pretty good, like he's solid. Um, it just seems like, oh my God, it's a bunch of Penix. Damn, that is unfortunate. I'm just, I'll grab Bonix, but that is annoying. I guess I'll get Izzy as well, but man, that sucks. I really wanted to take a... Uh, Damn, yeah, bro, really? Really, bro? Ah, oh, well, I really want to take Penix there, but I'll just take Bonix. It's fine. I mean, I think he's um, solid, too. I just really wanted Penix. But that's all right. How's Bonix? 24. Well, this won't be the draft that I get Michael Penix, but I will uh, I will probably experiment with this a little bit more with like Mayer and like Sutton and Javante type stuff, but I, I will try to like um, try to do this kind of stuff more. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and try to rep replicate this down the road here. <clears throat> well, is what it is, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll take Izzy now. Whatever. Uh, I think I think he's still a good pick, but I'm not as like I'm not as confident with him as I am with Hank. Personally, I think they're both like solid. I just don't know if like I feel as confident about Izzy being the backup. It just seems like there's like a little bit more like smoke where there just could be a all of a sudden you know they end up with a rookie this year and he like overtakes. Is he as the backup to Brees, but who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to end this with Trey Tucker, Bo Nix as my last couple picks. Pretty un, un uh, it's inspiring picks, but I think it's kind of a fun way to to attack a second quarterback in a Hurts build since you're already taking a very early pick on Hurts. I took Hurts in the third round. I need him to be healthy. I need him to play well. And if he doesn't play well or he's not healthy, I'm going to lose anyways. So I think... You know, making your bet on like a pretty thin piece like Knicks is a, a fun way to run that quarterback and still take risk um, and then kind of like capitalize on the extra capital at running back you have. Where I feel like I have a good group here of running back. Um, maybe I wish I took Izzy back and maybe just dropped another rookie here, whether that be like Lob or, or Loop or, you know, Fidal, Isaiah Davis or my guy, uh, Keelan Robinson. Couple of the rookies in there that are like Dylan Johnson. We got uh, Kendall Milton, Milton, another rookie. So there's like a lot of rookies down here that like are tempting, but I don't know. It's just it's kind of hard to say who makes the most sense. But I mean, having made most likely the handcuff to Brees and most likely the handcuff to ETN, um, handcuff or at least backup to you know a lot of backups here down but i think they're all like in a good spot to you know, contribute he mitchell i feel like will contribute as soon as he's back on the field you know if he never got hurt i would assume he'd be in the pick like you know 120s probably 150s at the latest if he was healthy all season because he was going to continue to crush and like have some good plays so i feel pretty strongly about him like being a you know a late uh you know, a later, like, later, like, or much earlier pick. Like, I could see him being in, like, the 10th, 12th round or something like that instead of where he's at now in, like, the 15th, I believe. Yeah, like, I took him in the 14th. Yeah, so, or the 15th. Yeah, exactly. So, I just think, I think he makes sense as a guy that, that will justifiably rise and uh, as, as, like, health concerns go down a little bit. And would have been much higher had he played the whole season. So, so let's hope I don't get sniped on Knicks. Um, this is the guy that sniped me on. No, it wasn't him. It was this guy. No. Who sniped me on my Michael Penix? Who did it? 
Who did it? TC Broom. Okay. He's behind me. Maybe I'm safe. He did need another quarterback. I got that's fair, but I just was hoping he would leave that for me. People were a little antsy at running back late or quarterback late. Bryce went at 193, McCarthy went 94. Seems like about right, actually. Yeah, right around ADP for both. Okay, so I got Bo Nix here, and then I hopefully get the Trey Tucker stack on the back end. And I think that <clears throat> that pretty much assumes like if Denver or the Raiders are the ones that select Knicks and he plays the season I will have a stack with him. And it feels like, okay, you're playing it too safe. But at the same time, I think just doing this is like giving you an avenue in the big board. That's like no one else is really exploring where I think there's people that are take Knicks with Denver and, you know, Raiders pieces, but not enough um, or not a lot at all. Like I, I feel like it's very low percentage of people that are actually doing that um so if you wake up you know after the draft and you end up with the denver quarterback with a double stack or a single stack in the big board um you know you still have some work to do to make that like actually pay off but um i would feel good about that just in general just as a process standpoint where you could find a stack that you know people could even like could barely even look their way into getting that stack like even if you got lucky, you could rarely get that stack because sometimes these quarterbacks aren't getting drafted. So you're kind of like, I'm getting a low owned stack potentially, and I'm getting something that, oh my, this guy. No way. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm down bad. Down real bad. Oh no. No. No, 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 no. It's Keelan time. Wow. I'm shocked. Stunned. I'm in pain. Whatever. Anyways. My point was made, but not end up. I couldn't even capitalize on it because this guy took Trey Tucker. Oh my gosh, man. That's that is tilting. That is really tilting, bro. Oh my god. Anyways, this is a weird player to get sniped on. So I was like, what the hell? Anyways, that's fine. I can get my rookie again. So besides the point, um, I just think you're potentially getting a low end piece because Knicks and Penix aren't getting drafted, weren't drafted every single draft. And then second fact, you're like purposely trying to stack him with Denver or Vegas pieces, which I think to some might be a no brainer, but I think a lot of people don't think that far ahead and be like, okay, I'll take these rookies, but I'm not really going to, not going to worry about stacking them, you know, because I don't know where they're going. So, you know, and same might be said for May. Like, a lot of people won't think that far about May and and Daniels. They might be like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know where they're going. I'm not going to worry about stacking them. But, like, some people, a.k.a. me, and, you know, I know other people do this as well, they might try to get McLaurin, and they might try to get um, the Murray or Douglas just to try to stack Washington and New England pieces with it. But, Hey, if he ends up on Denver, I guess this team makes the most sense, and I didn't waste a pick on Trey Tucker. But um, I will probably go out of my way to try to get a team in this big board before it ends with some Denver and Raiders pieces with either both or one of Penix and Knicks. 